it is 30 past midnight. I just finished doing my hair. I just decided what video I'm filming right now. I have other videos to film later and I have to edit this and upload it by a reasonable time tomorrow and I have a 10 page term paper due also by a reasonable time tomorrow. So things are going wonderfully. <laughs> Okay, so I really wanted to do something a little different for this video. This was going to be my Believeathon TBR, but I've decided that I'm just going to squeeze that in to the beginning of my vlog for that. So keep an eye out for that after the Believeathon is over, which I believe is May 24th. So, so keep an eye out for that the next Wednesday or Friday after that if I'm still keeping up this upload schedule. This is literally like I'm just everything is by the seat of my pants because I don't know what's gonna work for me yet so we'll see but instead I wanted to do something a little bit different rather than just a TBR because I've only done like TBR a TBR and then a wrap-up for this channel so I want to do something a little bit more unique um, so today I'm going to be recommending you guys videos based on my May playlist I wouldn't consider myself especially knowledgeable about music but music is one of my favorite outlets for stress and anxiety and so I do a thing. I'm also a big gamer so typically I make two big playlists a month. I make one chill playlist and one gaming playlist and sometimes more depending on the month but I decided that one of the things I think would be neat is if I recommend you guys books based on my monthly playlists. Obviously I won't recommend a book per song because they get quite long. I think my April playlist was like four or five hours long by the end of it. Actually it was probably longer. It was like six or seven hours by the end of the month. Currently my May playlist is only like an hour and a half long but still. <laughs> so I've got 10 books based on 10 songs that are on my April playlist. Obviously I will be telling you what the songs are. Um, hopefully I tried to pick books that are kind of lesser known or at least what I think are lesser known that I haven't really heard people talk about. Um, but hopefully even if you have heard of or already read the books maybe you get some music recommendations out of it. I don't know. It's relatively popular music. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what people listen to. So yeah, let's just get into it. There are no particular order to these. Um, I'm just going to talk about them, talk about the song, talk about why I paired the two together. And yeah, I have obviously read all of these, so I'll give you kind of an idea of how I felt about them and a little bit of a synopsis of what they're about. But let's get started. So the first book I chose is the only kind of little bit of a meme book that I chose. It's not really a meme book, it's just that the song and the book don't necessarily remind me of each other. It's really only the title of the song and the concept of the book that I feel like are related um, in a kind of funny way, but I'll explain it. So the book is The Rook by Daniel O'Malley and the song is Pretender by AJR. Um, there's a couple of different versions of this one. I really like the regular version which also has Stevie Aoki and Little Yachty and I also really like they did an acoustic version and like a Spotify single things which is also very good so check it out and also check out AJR if you haven't because I feel like they're kind of smaller. I feel like they're growing in popularity but I haven't heard a ton of people who know about them. But the reason why this is a little bit of a meme is because The Rook definitely does not have the same vibes as that song. I chose it for this entirely because the concept of The Rook, if you haven't read it, is that there is this woman named Miffany Thomas. She is British? Her name is Welsh, I think. It's interesting. Um, basically what happens is Miffany wakes up in a park. It's nighttime, it's raining, there are bodies all around her. She doesn't know if they're like alive or dead or what, but they're unconscious at least. Bodies all around her and they're all wearing latex gloves and she doesn't know why and she realizes that she doesn't even know her own name. So it kind of goes from there. She starts discovering these letters from herself to her future self, her amnesiac self, because her past self knew that something was going to happen where she was going to forget everything. And so basically, Miffany has to pretend to know what's going on in her life. She has to go to past Miffany's job and act like she understands what's happening and act well enough that the people around her don't understand that she has lost her memory because that would be kind of catastrophic because Miffany works in essentially what is like Britain's version 
it's the supernatural version of MI6. So they're this like super secretive agency, but instead of handling like regular like political and like foreign policy kind of things, they handle supernatural things that take place that uh, they need to cover up basically. So it would be really bad if people in the super secretive confidential agency figured out that she doesn't know what the fuck is going on. So yeah. That's why this song and this book, both the song and the book are very good and I would highly recommend checking either of them out if you haven't. Okay, so the next song, I think I'm gonna say the song before the book. I don't know, I'm figuring this out entirely as I go, which I think is fine because I'm having fun with it. The song is called The River by Aurora. It's a great, like, kind of meaningful but upbeat song. I don't know, if you've never listened to Aurora, I would definitely recommend her. Um, Whitney over at Whitney Novels is actually the reason that I first started listening to her a couple years ago and I love her. Um, she does a lot of really good songs that are really like deep and emotional but also have this like fun kind of poppy vibe, I don't know. But it's The River which is basically a song about learning that it's okay to be in pain and accepting pain in a way that helps you process and like develop it's basically like the river is tears essentially it's like telling you it's okay to cry and like sometimes it makes you better like it's not a bad thing to cry essentially is like what it boils down to and like don't worry about like losing yourself in the pain like you kind of can find yourself in the pain so the book that I chose for this is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon uh, I don't want to spoil too much for this because I feel like the reason I chose this song for this book is a little bit of a spoiler, but essentially our main character, Paige, I wrote this like a year ago so I can't remember, um, our main character Paige is brought into kind of a situation where she is a captive of a large society of sort of alien people to her and she doesn't understand what's going on entirely or why this is happening to her um, or even like what is happening at all like she can't really process it and so it's obviously a very painful experience for her she's torn away from her home and her family and brought into this like completely new landscape that she doesn't understand and she learns a lot through it and I feel like she processes a lot and like develops a lot as a character just going through that like kind of being thrown into the fire of it essentially and I feel like that's kind of the vibe of the river so that's why I chose this. Both again great book great song check them out. We're 10 minutes in and I've talked about two books so this is going swimmingly. So I uh the song that I chose for this next one I am cannot put words together right now. This bodes really poorly for my term paper tomorrow but it's fine everything's fine. Uh the song that I chose for this one is Somewhere Only We Know by Keen. I believe. Beautiful song. The book I chose is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Aliri Sanz. I love this book. As a young queer person in Texas, like this book means literally the world to me at times. Like I just... I have a lot of feelings about it. I'm sure a lot of you have already read this. I mean, obviously it's won like every award on the planet, so like it's not like people have never heard of it before, but that book and that song, like, oh, like I couldn't, it's one of those things where I couldn't even articulate why I put them together. They just belong together. Like the song started playing when I was thinking about this video and I was immediately like, well, obviously I have to do Ari and Dante. And I was trying to do books that people hadn't heard of, but I was like, there's literally nothing else I could choose for this. Like it has to be Ari and Dante. So another really popular one that I couldn't get away from choosing. I just had to go with this book. The song is Company You Keep by Maren Morris, which is basically just a song about how like friends matter more than status in a way. Like it's basically just about like being around people you care about is more important than like being rich or whatever. It's just about having good friends, basically. So I chose Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. It's at the point now where I listen, I have listened to the audiobook of this. I've actually never read this copy, but I really need to reread it because I love this book. It's another male male romance, but honestly, I don't know who under the sun hasn't heard of this book by now. If you haven't, please check it out. It's great. Um, but yeah, Company You Keep it was another one where I was like really good friend groups. So I was like thinking about like a really good cast of characters and right now this is all I can think about in context of that. So here you go. Okay, so this is kind of like an angsty 
back in the day vibes. I mean, the song came out in 2014, so it's not back in the day, but it is six years ago. It's um, Why Worry by Set It Off. It's kind of like a pop punk rock vibe. Literally, the title is the whole thing. It's just like, why worry about anything because worrying doesn't help you. And for this, I chose Sanctuary by uh, Corinne Licks. I think that I chose this song for this book because of the rock vibes, honestly. It just kind of, I kind of knew that I had to pick sci-fi and I was either going to pick Illuminate or this. And I was like, most people have heard of Illuminate, so I'll go with Sanctuary. I actually just read this last month and in my um, wrap up, I think I said that I get, was going to give it five stars and I have actually just, like within the past couple of days, decided to start using a different rating system. So my rating for this has gone down to three stars, but that's not a bad thing because I went through my whole year on this new rating list and like 70% of the books that I've read and enjoyed are three stars. So, um, but yeah, this is a sci-fi book kind of in the vein of Illuminae and it is about a prison called Sanctuary, which is a prison for super powered teenagers uh, in space. It's a like space station situation and the daughter of the warden of Sanctuary is the main character of this book and something goes wrong in the prison and she gets taken captive by some prisoners who have escaped and after that happens an alien life form infiltrates Sanctuary and starts killing everybody so they kind of have to learn to work together despite the fact that they're prisoners slash guards slash wardens kind of situations so yeah I feel like I, I chose Why Worry because it was kind of just like it's like rock and hard and it's kind of just like why worry about things when you could do things about them instead and I feel like that's a little bit of the vibe of this book like we're not going to get anywhere by worrying about the fact that there's an alien after us or worrying about the fact that like you're a prisoner and I'm like supposed to be this kind of monolithic power over you it's complicated the power dynamics in this are very complicated but yeah it just gave me the vibes so I know that doesn't really explain anything but that's all I've got. <laughs> so the next book is the book and the song that inspired this video entirely and I literally was like if I don't make a video like this I have to tweet about it or something because I just can't get it out of my head the way this works so well and you can kind of see it in the corner. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, the song is The Feeling by Sammy Ray, which is a very chill vibe of a song about what it's like to be in love with somebody and how sometimes you get hurt and sometimes you should let yourself get hurt and sometimes it's worth it to be in this relationship that might not be super comfortable all the time but making it work is a good thing it's just it's great and the book I chose for that is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang I literally like I was just driving in my car today and the feeling came on and I literally just read this in its entirety yesterday and I immediately was like oh my god this song this book are made for each other I for those of you who don't know the kiss quotient is about an autistic woman named Stella and she thinks that she is not good at sex um, I think in reality after reading this book it's just that she was having sex with pretty shitty men um, so anyways she decides to hire a male escort to basically give her sex lessons so that she can be better at it and that eventually morphs into them being in a like practice relationship so there's fake dating in this where he's like teaching her how to be good at relationships because she doesn't um exactly pick up part of her autism is that she's not good at picking up on um, social cues as I think is pretty common as someone who's not autistic I can't say but I think that's fairly common um, and so he's kind of teaching her how to navigate the minefield that can be romantic relationships when it comes to body language and like unspoken things that she may not pick up on the way other people do. From everything that I've heard the rep in this is really good it is own voices the author is uh, autistic and I follow some people who are artistic who've read this and really thought that it was well represented so that was cool um, but the feeling the reason that it came like the vision of this video came to me because of this pair was just that like the feeling is all about understanding how to let go basically and I think that's a lot of 
this book for Stella is learning how to relax in a way like I feel like that's a lot of what this is about learning to relax and learning to trust someone and I feel like that's also kind of what the feeling is about so read this book listen to that video listen to that video listen to that song I don't even know it's after midnight this is a mess the next song is Deep Waters by American Authors. This is another one that I love multiple versions of. I actually listened, the regular version was on pretty much all my playlists last fall, but I actually just started listening to the acoustic version today, which I love. Um, the book for this is The Foxhole Court by Nora Sakovic. I almost forgot her name. This is the first book in the All for the Game series. I feel like this is like one of the most popular indie books that I know of personally. I don't... I it's weird. I feel like this is popular among people who know about it, but I don't know how many people know about it. I don't hear a ton of people talking about it except like on Tumblr and stuff, which is where I am a lot, so I don't know. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. I feel like this is also very polarizing, like you either love this series or you hate this series, and everyone I've recommended it to has loved this series, so just... The All for the Game series in general is about our main character Neil Jostin who is very secretive and you don't know a lot about him going into the book so I'm not going to talk a lot about him. Basically all you know about him is that he is super into this sport called XE which is like a mix of... I, I know lacrosse is one of them but I honestly don't remember. I think it's like lacrosse and hockey and like a little bit of football don't quote me I'm not good at sports on a regular day I'm definitely not good at made up sports it's really like I was gonna say heartbreaking it's like really energizing to read about the way Nora writes them playing XC is just chef's kiss beautiful but yeah so Neil really likes the sport XC and he gets uh, basically a scholarship to a college to be on their XE team and it's like the worst XE team in the country they're all shit and you get there and you realize that like they're also part of the reason they're all shit is because none of them get along like they're all assholes and I love them <laughs> um this is definitely one of the books where you have to like really you either love these characters or you hate them because I acknowledge that like all of them across the board all of them Neil included they're complete dicks like they're all assholes and if you don't vibe with that really quickly then you're probably gonna hate this series so like don't even bother with it but if you think you might like kind of a more morbid darker sport it's kind of like a dark academia because they're at college plus like a mob thriller you will love these books and I chose Deep Waters because it's just like a darker kind of introspective song about like losing yourself and I feel like those are big themes in this series in general if you've read it you probably understand uh, so yeah and the song for this one is Last Party by Mika and I am just started to get into his music more I really loved popular when it came out years and years ago because I feel like that got really popular but I'd never heard Last Party before one of my friends added it to this playlist and it is beautiful and also really topical right now so uh, the book I chose for this is We All Looked Up by Tommy Wallish. I actually read this first like right after it came out which I think was in like 2014-2015 and I haven't read it since then but I obviously loved it at the time um, and I was just when I picked this because I knew immediately that this was what I was going to pick I started skating through and like reading what I had tabbed which is obviously like a lot and laughing at it already so I think I should go back and reread this and see if I still enjoy it as much as I did then. But the concept of this is it's basically a, I think it focus. I'm not sure if it focuses on the friend group. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of like, I don't know if it's intentional, but it feels like a retelling of The Breakfast Club, and essentially what happens is it's these people who don't necessarily get along. Um, they are all in high school together, but they're not like the same types, like it's like the athlete and the slut and the slacker and the overachiever um there's no way this isn't intentionally inspired by the breakfast club just reading that um but then they find out that this asteroid is hurtling towards earth and they're all gonna die within like four days or like a week or something so they all decide like our lives are already over let's just like go wild and do all the things we've always wanted to do so it's like basically like last party was written about this book 
Obviously Last Party is literally just a song about like if it's the end of the world like why not go crazy so <laughs> makes a lot of sense. And the very last second to last one is uh, a song that I've just forgotten. I'm gonna get it back. It's gonna come back to me, I promise. Oh, it's I Know Places by Taylor Swift. For this one, I chose kind of like a different one. I kind of, this song kind of has an opposite vibe of this, but it spoke to me in a way that I can't really explain. It's Shudder by Courtney Alameda. The concept of this book is basically what if the whole uh, story of Dracula really happened and they slay Dracula. Uh, so like Van Helsing and the other guys, I don't remember their names. It's not important because Van Helsing is, well, a descendant of Van Helsing is the main character of this book. And so basically the concept is that if all of those like vampire hunters had basically banded together to create this like private security agency that went like into the future kind of like the Pinkerton agency like the detective agency if they had done something like that but supernatural founded and obviously if all this was real and so this is modern times uh the Helsing I don't know what the I think it's just the Helsing Corporation is a ghost hunting agency and the main character is the like heir to the corporation basically she's a teenager and she has a bunch of friends who are all also descendants of those original vampire hunters and they are in training to be like fully fledged ghost hunters and they ended up getting a little over their heads in a situation one night and get ghost touched which is really bad and basically I think the only way to cure it is to like capture the ghost that ghost touched them or something like that I can't remember exactly because it's been like three years now I think two or three years since I've reread this but the reason I chose I Know Places is because Michelle is the main character, Michelle Helsing. She, there, a lot of this book is tied up in her mother's death and also in her childhood home and so there's a lot about like the importance of place and the influence place can have on something like a death or like the influence a death can have on a place and also like what a place can become. It's, there's a lot about, basically just because there's a lot about her childhood home and all the emotional turmoil that's caught up in like going back there and everything. And yeah, that's just the vibes. And I also wanted to talk about this book because I need to squeeze it in as much as possible and also convince myself to reread it and talk about it. And maybe make a video about it. Maybe I'll vlog myself. I don't know what I'm doing. I just read Shutter if you're interested in ghost things. It's also got a really cool thing with cameras that I can't explain right now. Because this video is too damn long already. We we're on the last one. <laughs> the last song that I chose is The Beginning by Little Mix. Okay, so the book that I chose for this um, is called, oh, what is it called? It's called The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. The reason that I couldn't remember what it's called is because I actually have the second one with me, which is European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman. Um, I don't have the first one right now because I lent it to my mother because I convinced her book club to read it because I love them that much. <laughs> These books are actually, in a way, very similar to Shudder, I'm just realizing. Um, the beginning is a song about, like, how uh, friends come together and, like, how good relationships, like, platonic relationships can start. So that's why I chose this series. I knew I was going to choose the first book in a series because, obviously, I had to. <laughs> um, but basically, what the series is about, and I believe the series is called something like the Extraordinary Adventures of the Athena Club, I think is what they're called. I'm not entirely sure, but you could look them up. Um, this book series is about... The main character is Mary Jekyll of Jekyll and Hyde fame. She is Jekyll's daughter and her father passes away. Her mother then also passes away and she inherits their house and like the responsibility they live in like Victorian London um so she is like a young woman on her own she doesn't have anyone to support her and her parents didn't exactly leave her a bunch of money but she finds out that they had been sending money or her father at least had been sending money to take care of a young girl at like an orphanage or like nunnery or something she he had like housed a young girl there that she didn't know anything about and she goes there and finds out that the young girl that had been being taken care of is uh, 
Hyde's daughter. Obviously at this point in the story, like spoilers if you've never read Jekyll and Hyde, but they're the same person. I feel like everybody knows that, but if you didn't, sorry. But so she finds out that this girl is Hyde's daughter and obviously doesn't know that this means that she is her sister. And basically the story just moves forward with them discovering all these secrets about Jekyll and Hyde and what it means. And they start running into other characters who are young women who are basically experiments of other huge figures from literary sci-fi history basically. So I think one of the next characters they run into is Justina Frankenstein and then they also run into Catherine who is one of Dr. Moreau's creatures. Actually these books, I've read the first two obviously and loved them. I listened to the audiobooks which are really good and then I bought the hard copies off of book outlet and I believe the third one is out which is like the sinister case of the mesmerizing girl or something like that but I haven't read it yet if it is out it might not be out quite yet but I'm looking forward to that one hugely basically these books I'm literally hugging it <laughs> um these books are about these girls coming together or these women most of them are women although Hyde I think her name is Diana Oh, the other one that they run into is Van Helsing's daughter, which makes a lot of sense and is also very relatable to what we were just talking about. Yeah, um, Hyde's daughter is named Diana. Diana's younger. I think she's like 16, 15 or 16, and all the rest of them are in like at least their early 20s. I think a couple of them are supposed to be like 30s-ish. So this is like riding the line between like young adult, new adult, adult. They're, it's kind of all in there. Um... But yeah, they just basically they discover that all these men that they looked up to, either fathers, father figures, or just like people that they trusted, have been experimenting on them and using them in pursuit of scientific discovery. And they don't think that's particularly fair because they had no agency over that. And they had obviously no decision in whether or not their bodies or minds or even like genetic code could be altered. And they kind of strike out to like discover the truth about their upbringing and their births and then kind of fight back against the scientific institution that sees nothing wrong with what they're doing. It's very empowering and very feminist but also very nostalgic. I mean at one point in the second book like no huge spoilers but um they run into Dracula who is like a pretty nice guy. <laughs> He's like a really cool character in this series that I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, so it's like empowering and feminist and like diverse and then at the same time like you're hanging out with like Sherlock and Holmes and Dracula and hearing about like Jekyll and Hyde. Like it's just... I love this series <laughs> so much and I've literally never heard anybody else talk about it so... <sighs> Please read it. It's on script. It's amazing. I love it. But yeah, those are all the books that I paired. I just thought one of them was bent. It's okay. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Those are the books that I paired with some of my favorite songs or my current favorite songs off of my May playlist. I'm really looking forward to doing more of these because I really, really enjoyed this. So let me know if you guys liked it down below. Let me know if you like any of the songs or the books that I mentioned or maybe you could come up with different recommendations on the song or the book side. Like, I don't know, maybe you think something would work better for Red, White, and Royal Blue. Let me know what your songs for these books are or what... I don't know, just talk to me in the comments. I just, I had so much fun with this video. I really loved it. Okay, I don't have anything else to say here, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye.